which green makes your pee smell? It's asparagus. Asparagus. Asparagus makes yeah. your pee smell funny. Why yes. is that? It actually has um, a very specific chemical compound called asparagusic acid. And it's sort of a sulfuric compound. So like sulfur stinks, right? It smells like rotten eggs. And that's what's in asparagus. Now, the crazy thing is, is that there's a few variations of it. Some people will eat asparagus and they will not have asparagus pee. Some people will eat asparagus and have asparagus pee. Some people will have it and not be able to smell it genetically, incapable of smelling it. So there's myriad variations of how you process that asparagusic acid. I, my pee stinks. <laughs> Just putting that out there. Up front, I'm honest with you. How about yours, Ali? My pee smells like birthday cake. This is dissolving much earlier than I thought it would be. <laughs> Welcome to a Papa Teach Me video. Hey guys, I'm Ali. Today I'm joined by the amazing Nicole Jolly from True Food. She is a human Google about food, how it grows, where it comes from, and just everything about food. I'm putting that on my business card. But you're not used to English food. Not so much, no. Right, so mm -mm. today we're gonna show you a bunch of really cool English foods, some I grew up with. And Nicole is gonna drop some knowledge on me um, from different foods, how it grows. I will try. Try Let's... to make your mind explode. Whoa. Of course, we're gonna start with a classic cup of tea. Now, this tea is without any milk. Yes. Typically, I would have it with milk. I agree. Which brings us to our first descriptive word for food, bitter. This is gonna be way bitter. You ready? So that's interesting. We pronounce that word differently. Oh. I say bitter. And I say the R that exists in the word, bitter. You pronounce the T as well then. Yes. Most Americans would say probably bitter. Bitter. They would change the T yeah, for Yeah, they'd a D. say like the, that soft T to, yeah, slightly right. D. But I have good diction, Allie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited for this video. I've wanted to do this for so long. And now we're finally here. We're I'm so happy to cheers. be here. Cheers. cheers. For the most horrid cup of tea ever. It's not enjoyable. Okay, do you feel that at the back of the throat though? Do you feel that? Bitter often makes your kind of, your face scrunch, not pucker, that might be sour can you, or tart. Can you demonstrate a pucker? Okay, oh yeah, yeah, there's like, right? <laughs> and then there's the like the bitter to me. So me it makes you do that face. face. Yeah, like it's the back of the throat. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's this kind of bitter in tea and yeah. then there's the bitter that also comes from coffee, right? We, we have a coffee. All right, let's try a coffee. All right, so I am more of a coffee drinker. Are you more of a tea drinker, quintessentially British in that way? I should be, but no, I my morning routine always involves a coffee. Like, five, likewise, five afternoon and evening routine. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, now, does the caffeine keep you up? No. No? I'll have an espresso at 11 and just fall mm. right to sleep. I'm fine. Wow. Bionic man right here. Or I'm just very tired. <laughs> <laughs> you don't sleep. But this is black coffee. Mm -hmm. This is no milk. So then it classifies as bitter. Yeah, I'm getting it at the back of the throat again. So location-wise, bitter, the back of the throat. Now right? I notice it, now Do you, you talk about my it. My tongue actually goes up to the top of my the roof of my mouth and goes uh, like that. <laughs> yeah. Humans, we have evolved to not really like bitter things, but a long time ago, we ate a lot more bitter things and we were probably healthier for it. Interesting. But, yeah. So what is the difference between bitter and sour? Completely different. Um, there are the faces that you make, which I demonstrated earlier, but technically speaking, so sour is, uh, uh, what causes sourness is usually the presence of acid. So acidic foods like lemons, like limes, um, they are the ones that are sour. Um, but if you think about sort of coffee and, well, coffee actually is acidic a little bit, but like take the greens, for example, there's no acid in there. They, those are just bitter compounds. So things that have acid generally is a good rule of thumb. Right. For sour. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Smell that? I uh, no. Ah, Salivation. It's so gorgeous. No. The seeds. 
if you plant this lemon seed, it might not grow a lemon. It could grow an orange, it could grow a lime, a very incestuous family citrus. Is that Game of Thrones of fruit? <laughs> exactly. Okay. So if I plant this, I'm yes. not necessarily gonna get a lemon. No. So how you ensure that you're gonna get a lemon yeah. is you don't plant the seed. You basically clone the tree, which sounds scary, but it's like ancient practice, which is you take a bit of one tree and you graft it onto the rootstock of another tree. Yeah. And then it grows that exact lemon for you. So everything's just basically cloned these days. Okay, sour. <laughs> Confirmed. Sour. Sour! <laughs> now, do you know the difference between sour and tart? No. I don't think there is a difference. I think I've only ever heard a cherry referred to as tart. Yes, that's, yeah. And I, I don't know why, because it, it, it is essentially a sour cherry. Sour and tart are basically synonyms. Yeah. I think it's just, you know, sort of how you want to play with the language. Can you briefly explain tangy? Okay. When I think of something tangy, it's not as intense as a sour lemon. It definitely has a sour kick, but maybe tempered by a sweetness, like a like a green apple. Yeah, for me, a tangy thing is like has that kick. It's like a short, mm. sharp hit of sour, kind of. Yeah, not as intense, right? No, and not it's as like, acidic. Totally. I think it's tempered with some sweetness. I would I would use tangy if it wasn't as intensely sour. It's just yeah, tempered with some sweetness. Right. A bit more complex, maybe. The next word I'm very excited about, sweet. This typically involves a food with a lot of sugar in it. And I'm very excited about this one because if you come to England, promise me that you'll get a sticky toffee pudding. It's the most delicious thing you'll ever try in your life. Truth. Truth. I love it when it's like super moist. You know, sometimes yeah. sometimes it can be like yeah. a bit on the dry side and they kind of phone in the caramel. Yes. And, uh, but when it's like just oozing with stickiness. Now, when it comes to desserts and cake type desserts, yeah. are you a cream or a custard type person? Custard. Me I'm too. gonna just choose that, yeah. right? I, I totally agree, I love custard. For as healthy as I love to eat, I love sweets. Yeah, I will Count drink custard. <laughs> So what makes up a sticky toffee pudding? Well, you've got cake, you've got mm. caramel, you've got delicious toffee flavor. It's like 90% sugar, I think. <laughs> yes, definitely. Which gives it that delicious sweet, sweet taste. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> the sign for sweet. There is a party in my mouth right now. I'm very happy. Mm. We're having sticky toffee pudding for lunch today. This is so good. This is like my favorite video I've ever made. <laughs> Savory. Savory just means a food that's not sweet, basically, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But Latin languages particularly will make the mistake of saying it's not sweet, it's salty. That's a mistake. Salty means it tastes of salt. But savory just means it's not sweet. Yeah, it's sort of like a category of savory, right? Salty can be, savory is generally the anti-sweet, and then yes. a lot of savory foods can be salty. Exactly. Yeah. So our first English food, which we would describe as savory, is the classic, the humble Cornish pasty. If you come to England and you don't have a Cornish pasty, you haven't visited England. <laughs> have you ever tried the Cornish pasty? I have, and I actually, because I am a food geek, went on a pilgrimage to find the best Cornish pasty in Cornwall. Whoa. And like, I can already tell, this is this came from a store, guys, right? So yeah. this is, we, this we is like your bog standard Cornish pasty, which is what most people will enjoy. And it's a disservice because a great Cornish pasty is a beautiful thing. A meal yeah. in a pocket of like flaky, buttery pastry, like what's not to love? Right? It's true, it's true. So yeah. But if, if you're in a rush, it's you good. want some good hot Solid. food and you have to move to catch your train, you only have true. a short lunch break, you grab a Cornish pasty. True. Um, now what goes inside the Cornish pasty? We've got steak, we've got onions, we've got some vegetables. 
Yeah, potato I'm seeing, right? There's okay. some potato in there too, yeah. Sometimes you can have other options like cheese and onion. Oh. That's an option, Ooh. a bit gross, not my favorite. <laughs> Sounds a bit greasy. Yeah. Shall we? Let's, let's do it. All right. Definitely savory. It's not my favorite. <laughs> So do you have anything similar to the Cornish pasty in the US? We have um, the influence of the Mexican empanada. Ooh, I like those. Which are delicious. <laughs> there is some kind of connection, I recall, between the Cornish pasty and the Mexican empanada. I know that Cornish miners went over to Mexico, and I don't know if it's like there's a region of Mexico that has Cornish pasties, or the Cornish pasty influenced the empanada. There's a connection there. We're gonna get a lot of hate from South American Sorry. viewers. Sorry, we love the empanada. It is way better than this Cornish pasty. Right, even if the pasty did influence the empanada, you guys improved it. Yeah, way better. Yeah. Also, which is very, very savory. <gasps> what is this? This is called a scotch egg. <laughs> oh my God, it, so me... it weighs so much, it's like. <laughs> it's got quite a heft, Wait, quite a weight to it. Oh. So yeah, it's like a little surprise inside. It's rattling around in there. What do we have? We have a hard boiled egg on the inside. Around the side of that is pork meat, sausage meat, oh covered in breadcrumbs. So- Why? The, Who the, thought of this? Like what, what, what was going on in their minds? So when they say scotch, it's Scottish. Okay. So it's a Scottish egg kind okay. of thing. But- You crazy Scots. We're English and we like to steal everything from other True. countries. So, True. Yeah. All right, here we go. Good thing is, you can have it, yeah, take it as however you want. Okay, not terrible and definitely savory. There is no sweet in that. So the great thing is about this, you can have it hot, you can have it cold. Usually when I get this, this is because I'm in a hurry. Yeah. This is not because <laughs> I want to have a scotch egg today. No, this <laughs> is- You don't get cravings for these things? No, this is a fuel for me. Mm. This is not an enjoyable food. I I can see this being way tastier. See, this was like a package from the store, so it was yeah. a bit soggy. Like fresh out of the fryer, crispy, yes. right? Like the, where the coating is crispy. I could see that being like in a pub maybe. Oh, yeah, scotch egg in a pub is a whole experience yeah? in itself. Yeah. Or if you go to Borough Market in South London, that is also a great place to get a great scotch I egg. I love Borough Market. Yeah. Say, it's great. Yeah. Is this something that you'd buy? Um, no. <laughs> okay, fine. Sorry. But the scotch egg and the Cornish pasty, you can't taste the salt in it. So it's not salty, it's savory. Salty foods, you can actually taste the salt in it, right? Yes. For example, so when we're kids or even now sometimes, if I want something salty, I will get a bag of crisps. Now you guys don't call them crisps, do no, you? No, no, you, you, very confusingly, these are chips for us. Right, our chips are your french fries. Right, and crisps, are our chips. <laughs> wow, we really are two yeah. countries separated by the same language. <laughs> Unnecessarily confusing. It really is. <laughs> like I said, salty. You can taste the salt. Yeah, salt. Oh. Crisps are really just a vehicle for salt. It's like a delivery system for salt, mm. right? Yeah? Uh, how many calories do you think we've had already? We I don't want to know. I really don't want to know. Can we not do this anymore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Ugh. Those words describe foods with tons of flavor and tons of character to them. Mm. But this next word, bland. Ugh, bland. <laughs> there's no flavor, there's no character, there's nothing sexy about this food whatsoever. So, okay, for this next food, I feel like we need to bring the tea back. Yes, yes. You can't have crumpets without tea. These are crumpets. You must always say tea and crumpets, right? It can't be, I'm, I'm having crumpets and tea. Um, yeah, no. It just doesn't flow, does it? No, you'd probably be arrested if yeah. you did that. Mm -hmm. Typically, you would have something on it, like butter, jam, Nutella. Oh. But I want to show you what bland is. So bland would be this without anything on it. It tastes of nothing. There's no, there's nothing sexy about this. Are we done with the crumpets? It's like eating cotton. 
What's your favorite topping on a crumpet or any toasted bread? Toast with butter. Ideally with butter, yeah. Yeah. If it's a really good butter, it adds yeah. salt. Yes. So I feel like every country has their national food that they sit with their family or their close friends mm. and chat. Yeah. Ours is the tea and the crumpets. Just don't eat them bland. Yeah, don't. Now we're going to move back into the sweet territory with a very traditional English sweet. You say candy, right? You say candy, yeah. Yeah. These ones, these are called crunchy bars. We're not sponsored by them. <laughs> what is that? That is honeycomb. Yeah. I love honeycomb. It's amazing, right? How come I've never known about this? How long have you lived in England? Oh my God. You don't live in England. No, I don't. I don't. But my British husband, you've been holding out on me. That is the sound of a crunch. To describe a food that makes that sound, it's crunchy. It's the loudest descriptor out there. So the crunchy bar, one of my favorite sweets ever. Also, I brought along digestive biscuits. Again, if you're in England and you want something sweet, something crunchy, hobnobs and digestives are our staple snack. Have you ever tried a hobnob? I've never had a hobnob. You're in for a treat because they're pretty good. And like I said, if you come to England and you want a biscuit, something sweet, something crunchy, something chocolatey, the digestive or the hobnob, you will not be disappointed. <laughs> Traditionally, we would put them in tea or coffee. Oh, you dip? We dip. Oh, we dunk. you dunk. We dunk them in tea, coffee, whatever you like. So they're a bit soggy. Yeah. And then, hmm. <laughs> pretty just, Okay. I've had a digestive and I quite like the digestive. And it's unlike any other cookie I've ever had. What's your opinion between okay. the... Okay, here's hobnob. Okay. It's more oaty, right? Mm-hmm. You prefer the digestive? I prefer it. Yeah. Yeah. This is I, I like a good oat cookie, but it doesn't, you know. Not doing it for you? Not doing it for me. To is that your own. favorite? Eh. This is the thing. I could eat a whole pack of digestives and feel great about it. Yeah. But if I had a couple of hobnobs, I'm like, Done. I'm good. That's enough for me. So what's the difference between crunchy and crispy? So a crunch gives you that feeling constantly but crispy it has the same kind of sound but it's more delicate yes so yes. we have to bring this back to our crisps more crisps again you're american so you don't have this flavor prawn cocktail what <laughs> yeah this is a very very british flavor prawn cocktail is this your favorite flavor it's pretty good here i'm gonna <laughs> I don't trust that I need this whole thing. Does it smell like? No, it just smells a bit sweet actually. But texture wise, crispy, it's that delicate crunch. It's so small and mm. Yeah, like crunchy fills up your head, right? It's just like, it, you hear it in your ears. Crispy is playful. You can keep your prawn cocktail. Do you know what? It's what? all right. So moving on to our next descriptor, our next item of English food that I grew up with is the Mars bar. This we would describe as chewy. Now, don't they fry these things up in Scotland? They do. It's very famous. If you go to Scotland, you can order a fried Mars bar. The verb to chew is to do this. If a food makes you chew a lot, it is chewy. For example, the Mars bar. Cheers. <laughs> I'm a mess. Mm-hmm. They used to have it as part of their advertising, a Mars a day. What? No. Can you what? imagine? Can you imagine having one of those a day? Oh God. But it was meant like for athletes because it's so oh, full of calories. It's wow. so, right? It will keep you going. It will give you that energy. But if anyone has a Mars a day, they'll just die. Yes. <laughs> I don't think that's a good thing to do. <laughs> it's a good message for kids. Okay, final two and... Please don't let it be sugar. Please don't let it be sugar. That thing's back. 
We're bringing back the Scotch egg for spicy. Oh. In England, we usually have mustard for our food. It's a nice little condiment. Some people love it, some people hate it. But yeah, spicy, how would we describe spicy? Wow, spicy um, fills your mouth with fire. So which other foods would be considered spicy? Spice comes in different form, right? Yeah. So with mustard, it comes from the mustard seed, but often uh, the source of spice and spicy foods is chili peppers, right? And there is actually a substance in the pith. Most people think it's the seeds in a chili pepper, but it's not. It's the inner kind of white ribs of a chili pepper that has intense spice. So it's not the seeds. It's not the seeds. If you just eat the what? seeds. What? Nope. I know. I know. Wrong. There you go. You're welcome. This is why I watch your videos. It's full <laughs> of knowledge. But this is this is from the mustard seed and but actually mustard seeds come from these gorgeous yellow flowers as yellow more yellow than the mustard itself and they're grown all over it, I mean this is like it's such an such an English tradition. Let's try it. Some people might put mustard on their scotch egg. Okay. Now the way you eat a scotch egg, it's subjective. Some people like it hot, some people cold, some with mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard. Ah. It's all up to you. Okay. But we're going to try it with mustard cuz I've never tried it. I haven't. Certainly we're going to we're going to see. So we've cut the scotch egg in half. We're just going to put a slight bit of mustard on it. Just that to see looks how like a lot tastes. of mustard. Is that a lot? Again, I've never actually tried mustard. How are you with spicy food? I really like spicy food, but yeah. people's tolerance for spice um, is dependent on the source. Like some cultures are really good with like a chili pepper type spice and other cultures are really good with a mustard type spice. It really depends on their cuisine. So all my Korean students, they'll tell me like they'll have spicy food for breakfast. Yeah. I'm like, how can yeah. you do that? You can really crave it. Yeah. If you can tolerate it. It's that endorphin rush Yes, afterwards, right? exactly. Mm. Exactly. It has that same sort of hormonal kick. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Is this going to blow my mouth off? I, like, I don't think mustard really ranks that highly on the spicy scale. Okay. But let's okay. give it a try. Let's yeah, give let's it a try. There you go. Mmm. Oh, yeah. That's exactly like wasabi. I told you. <laughs> that's I. That's wasabi. You're British. You should know this. You should know what Coleman's mustard does to you. I've never had mustard before. Ever? This is. Oh. It's hardcore, guys. Now I know why. It's good though. See, I. I could get behind this. Whoo! I love it. Is it? Is it growing on you? I want more. Oh. See, as bad as that was, I kind of want another bite. I love it though, right? That's. Oddly, it's oddly satisfying. yes. I I actually like with mustard. This Scotch egg is not that bad. Mm. It's really good. Oh my god, it's a kick to the face. Through the nose, right? Mm. Comes right out the nose. If you come to England and you like wasabi, you will definitely like mustard. Whew. And I recommend try it on a Scotch egg. <laughs> so one word I find very difficult to describe is umami. Okay, so not to confuse you, but um, it essentially means a savoriness. So you're generally only going to have that umami sensation with savory foods. It has to do with glutamate, the presence of glutamate. And certain foods are really high in glutamate, which includes mushrooms, ripe tomatoes have it. It's sort of like, um, that something something that makes a savory dish really tasty. Fish sauce, you would add fish sauce to a dish to, to give it that, just that something something that makes it so good. That's the presence of umami and it's so enigmatic. <laughs> Yes. Enjoyable, but savory. Yes, it's often condiments that get put on food to just get, you know, put it over the edge. So MSG, right, that goes into a lot of um, Asian cooking, Chinese cooking, that has uh, umami flavor. Ketchup, ketchup would do it. Do we have Mustard? Ketchup? I would say that it could fall into the umami camp. I would, I don't know for sure though, but certainly ketchup. We have ketchup. 
And like I said, a scotch egg, you can choose how you want to eat it. Hot, cold with mustard, mayonnaise, ketchup, whatever you want. Even a mix of mustard and ketchup, which is oh. what I'm going to try. Are you going to try it too? Yeah, that, that's a good idea. So we're going to test this umami thing out. Sweet, spicy, and umami. God, this looks disgusting. My... <laughs> this kind of looks like a bad infection. Oh, thank you. I'm so sorry. That was my first time trying a scotch egg with mustard. Now this is also another first for me with mustard and ketchup. Me too. Not terrible. So which bit of this is umami? Okay. So certainly the tomatoes in the ketchup, ripe tomatoes are loaded with glutamate, which is the source of that umami flavor. I don't know about you, but I don't think of this as like a quintessentially British food. Like it's not even British. It actually comes from the fish sauce of Southeast Asia. So like- What? Yeah, so British merchants went over, I'm talking like 1700s, went over, really uh, enjoyed the fish sauce that they were making in Asia, came back, tried to replicate it very badly. Yeah. So it sort of morphed into this sort of like condiment sauce that the British kind of tried to make to uh, mimic the fish sauce of Asia. And then the Americans got a hold of it and Heinz added tomatoes to the British recipe Whoa. and upped the umami flavor and um, made it actually more shelf stable. So after all those flavors, all those descriptors and all of those calories, I want to thank you, Nicole, for joining me for this uh, lesson. This has been fun, but- So fun. I think I'm going to have to be in the gym for the next three days just to burn <laughs> off like three hobnobs. <laughs> if you haven't done so already, make sure you check out True Food TV. It's an amazing channel and it has such educational content. I've wanted to do this video for so long Thank with you. Thank you so much, Ali. I have loved this. Uh, th this has been so much fun. <laughs> My personal recommendation is go and watch the episode about peaches. It's really insanely interesting. Yeah. Like some of them have hair and some of them don't. Yes. For some reason. Nectarines, peaches, same thing, different? You'll find out. Also, let me know in the comments, what's your favorite food? How does it taste? And how would you describe it using those words you just learned? Nicole, thanks for joining me. Anytime. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs> See ya. I've gone into a shop bought a birthday cake, just pretended it's for someone else, like, I'm gonna eat this by myself tonight. Of course your pee smells like birthday cake.